The response within WWE and AEW to Tony Khan's comments have been revealed. Plus, we had a Drew McIntyre injury update on Raw, and NXT talent are still concerned about releases. It's all in the Cultaholic Wrestling News right now. So Tony Khan had quite the day out during the NFL draft. Not only did he win plaudits for... by committing to the bit by yes. wearing the neck brace, you know, despite a lot of neck movement, but I'll forgive it. That's all right. Still good. Uh, he then later on uh, made a, a rather unusual comment, which I believe was designed as a as a, a sort of an anti-humor joke that wasn't taken that way at all. Yeah. When he could, where he said, you know, we are like Pepsi and WWE are like the Harvey Weinstein. Yeah. Uh, which, I mean, it, it, I think it, I think it was meant as an anti joke. I don't think it landed the way that it was supposed to at all. Uh, and uh, there's been a lot of comments about this from both sides, hasn't there? Yes. Uh, first of all, Tony Khan was asked about this in a recent TMZ interview conducted by none other than the superstar formerly known as Mojo Rawley. Ah, oh. What's Mojo doing there? Himself an interviewing gig with TMZ. Mm. Uh, Tony said in response to this, I think it's important to say that I think that AEW is the best wrestling company in the world in many ways. I think we have the best wrestlers, the best matches, we've been putting on the best shows. Kind of sidestepped the question there a little yeah, bit. Yeah, but is it important that you have to say that the other people are like Harvey Weinstein? <laughs> no. I don't um, think so. Now, apparently this has caused a bit of a stir behind the scenes in both companies, in both AEW and WWE. Uh, in the latest episode of Wrestling Observer Radio, Brian Alvarez spoke about the backstage reaction in both companies to Tony Khan's comments. And basically said that people thought it was ridiculous. Uh, apparently a lot of people in AEW also felt the same about Tony Khan painting WWE as an evil company because after all there's a lot of people in WWE who have friends within AEW and vice versa and they take exception to the comments made by Tony Khan and I think that's forgotten about I think the, the discourse particularly online just gets so heavy that you forget that you know you know they're all mates right yeah <laughs> you know they're all friends not all of them most but a of, lot them of them are friends yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like they chat and stuff outside of it and it's mm. just it's it's one of them and I th and it was a, a weird thing to say I think so and I, I think I agree with you I think he meant it as like a because uh, it was like their Pepsi were Coke yeah. is what it was meant to be but and it was subverting like... the punchline and all that sort of stuff but yeah. it didn't especially in the current climate with the very partisan fans of WWE and AW mm. it was it was probably always going to cause a stir in doing so he has maybe put more eyes on his promotion that would never have heard of it otherwise, though. It's, so, you know. It's true. I mean, nobody likes a subverted punchline more than I do <laughs> to get to the other side. There we go. But I think that this is probably, in the current market, in the current landscape, probably not the right connection to make, no. regardless of how you feel about it. I think it just, it, it flares up that conversation all over again. Mm. Uh, I mean, they're saying that at a time, of course, where, where Vincent Mann is, is still facing uh, allegations that could very much still go to a public course yes. over uh, incidents that occurred around Janelle Grant, which we have talked about on this channel as well. Uh, and it's obviously based around that in and some fact, of the previous cultural stuff. I didn't put it in the notes here, unfortunately, but Alvarez did mention that as well. He touched upon it and basically said, while a lot of people, you know, within AW and WWE understand that that is the situation and get what he was trying to do there. I think it was words to the effect of it, it, people, the normal people working there in WWE, the roster members and stuff, they don't want to be tarred with the same brush, you know. Like they, mm. you know, they don't want to be like, whoa, it's nothing to do with us, kind of thing. So yeah, yeah. Uh, Drew McIntyre on Raw, him and CM Punk had some fun uh, back and forth, mm. and and, and uh, some great promo work in general over the last months with those guys, but especially good on Raw last night. Uh, he gave an update on his own injury status on Raw last night. Very upset about Punk being drafted ahead of him. Uh, he. He, he, he completely lambasted Punk with a wonderfully fiery promo, revealing that Punk's attack at WrestleMania not only cost him the world title, but fractured his elbow, which is probably a kayfabe yeah. comment. Yeah, seems like he sustained the injury elsewhere, but I like that they've worked it into the storyline here, and they've given Drew even more of a reason to hate Punk, and they've added more fuel to this, to this feud that hopefully we'll get a really good conclusion somewhere down the line. He's proclaimed that unlike Punk, he is a real man and will continue to work through the injury. We then got interrupted uh, by Punk, who was in a skybox, and Drew hurried off to find him, only for Punk to somehow avoid him and end up back in the ring whilst <laughs> Drew was in, like, true Scooby-Doo yeah. style. They go back and forth from each other. Uh, and then there was a great bit of promo work again later on with Punk, too. Mm -hmm. Mike Johnson of PW Insider reporting that while Drew has been pulled from live events, he is slated to be at Backlash 
match in France over the weekend. He also declared for King of the Ring. I don't know how that will affect his current situation. Yeah. I'd assume you'd want him healthy. Of course you want him healthy for June for Clash of the Castle. Yeah, I feel as though King of the Ring is the sort of thing that even if he was originally penciled in as the winner for it, I reckon that's the sort of thing you could maybe rest Drew for because he's already got bigger things down the line. He doesn't necessarily need to be King of the Ring to lead on to these bigger feuds that are already in the works. The feud with Punk, potentially some sort of renewal of uh, hostilities with Damien Priest as well. I think we all kind of want him to batter Damien in Scotland. Mm. Freedom! And then get screwed over by CM oh. Punk. Could you Not imagine? Imagine God, that in Scotland. Good, it'd be very good. It'd be but amazing. I, I think I think that the UK fans deserve something after Drew lost to Roman Reigns at the first clash at the castle. They deserve to shower CM Punk <laughs> with booze as Drew is cost the title. I just want to see him win. No, I get, but I think either would be fantastic because we know the crowd are going to be incredibly passionate at the clash at the castle. Very much so. Uh, big thanks to the guys on SmackDown who gave Matthew Greg some much needed Botchamania material with a cracker between Cody Rhodes and Carmelo Hayes. Uh, and that particular spot, whilst ambitious and potentially Essentially delicious, uh, just a few inches off being what it was supposed to be. I can't work out what it was supposed. It, it, it was supposed to be a mid-air cutter. It was meant to be Carmelo Hayes going for a springboard, mm. but being caught mid-air with a Cody cutter. Oh, so it was. That's what it looked like it was going to be. Uh, see, I thought that it was the gap was kind of so big that it was actually meant to be a double miss, but they kind of it looked clunky. Either way, it didn't exactly come off how they wanted it to. Did it? No, it didn't. But no. there was some concerns coming out of that moment that Cody may have exacerbated an injury. Yes, uh, but those fears were laid to rest by Figure Four Weekly Online, who've reported regarding Cody Rhodes holding his shoulder after the missed, they say Oscar cutter, but he'd probably like it to be called the Cody cutter, uh, on Friday night in the double miss spot with Carmella Hayes. The only thing we were told by those in WWE is that there is no injury noted for Rhodes's shoulder. Um, so it was either he was doing a bit of good selling or it was like a minor injury that he should be able to... It wouldn't have any lasting effect. I Just suppose. shake it off and crack on the with. The fact that he was so obviously favouring it, I think it, it was probably a bit, uh, just a bit of wrestling from Cody Rhodes there. I think when you see spots like this in, in any promotion, which, which clearly seem ambitious mm -hmm. and don't quite land, I'm more for one going, you know what, shoot for the move because you'll land amongst the stars. Mm -hmm. You know, and I like what they were going for. Good, it didn't land for them. You know, whenever you see those big spots planned, that don't fall. It's easy just to go, wait, whack that on a botch's page straight away. But also, it's like, go for it, give it a go. Yeah, because if it, <laughs> if if it you feel comfortable yeah. with it, give it a go. I think so. We've seen like the likes of Randy Orton and Seth Rollins as RKO at WrestleMania 31, and that that could have easily gone wrong. But now it lives on forever and ever. And ever. In infamy, yes. they've all got it in for me. Uh, there were some releases from WWE last week. We saw uh, a few names, the likes of, uh, we saw Zion Quinn let go. We saw Von Wagner released. Uh, uh, Cameron Grimes let go, giving a very emotional video afterwards as well. Among the names, there's Ian Lee in there as well, mm -hmm. uh, gone from the company. Uh, and there is still a little concern behind the scenes uh, in the wake of those releases, isn't there? Yes, Mike Johnson of PW Insider has reported that there have been some NXT talents privately expressing concern that there could be cuts coming since they were untouched by recent WWE releases since everyone who was cut were technically under the purview of main roster deals. So people like Von Wagner, like Zion Quinn, even though we might be more used to seeing them on NXT, apparently they were under main roster style contracts. And this has led to some worries in NXT Basically, oh, they haven't come for us yet. What's going on? What, what, is it going to happen? Is it not? Yeah, there's a fear that that might... Obviously, it's not our place to speculate on whether or not that would happen. Mm. You know, hopefully it doesn't. And hopefully everything carries on the way that it's meant to. Uh, but, you know, it's one of those things that we will keep you up to date on mm. at cultaholic.com. On the podcast feed tomorrow, I had a lovely chat with Broken Matt Hardy, your mate. Over the weekend, you have a very potted history with, yeah. with Matt Hardy, don't you, in another life? Yes, he attacked me viciously. <laughs> <laughs> and your ear has never quite been the same since? No, no. Um, I still feel sometimes I can hear him in my dreams talking to me. <laughs> sort of stuff. Um, he's a very scary character. Well, I did ask him about that and about his time at uh, WCPW Delete, which saw him attempt to eat Jack the Jobber's ear. We talked about it for the podcast feed. We talked about a whole bunch of other things as well. His, his surprise TNA return, uh, his, his future plans for the broken persona and the greater Hardy multiverse. Uh, but we 
we also talked about whether or not a WWE return is on the cards because he was a cheeky boy the other day and he shared that Bray Wyatt QR code video yeah. and he's so intrinsically linked to Bray Wyatt. Obviously, I had to go, you know, how do we feel about going back there? Despite him recently Despite returning the fact that to he's, CNA. Yeah, 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 he's, yeah, he's got a series of dates with TNA. Uh, Matt Hardy told me, I just have such a storied history with Wyndham Rotunda, with Bray Wyatt, that I am obviously going to be in consideration for that. It's pro wrestling. You never say never. I do know TNA. It was very appealing because they offered a few dates and we come to do this thing. And that's what made it ultimately, made me ultimately the decision to do what, to go with them. I love what they're doing now. And it's going to be interesting to see how these next few weeks go. I'm very excited about this event coming up under siege on Friday. His first match is going to go down this week and it's a six person tag where he's teaming with Speedball Mike Bailey and Trent Seven against the system so he's straight in the mix uh, with TNA it seems like from the conversation we had he's there for a good time and not a long time yeah fair enough uh, I think that's fine because Matt Hardy's kind of a beloved member of TNA's history now uh, and I do like that even though he's kind of not willing to say def definitively yes or no to coming back to WWE and whether or not he's going to factor in those plans I like that he's um, made, stayed very respectful of the reason behind this whole cryptic stuff the Bray Wyatt stuff, the Wind and Rotunda stuff. Um, so whether or not he is involved down the line, I think um, I think it'll still it'll still be important to mm. WWE. He's got such a creative mind, and, and if your creative mind is lacking, maybe try using artificial intelligence. That's what we did with some of WWE's favorite wrestlers. <laughs> that video is so silly. <laughs> In which Sam, what, oh, it's good. It's good. Oh, it's it's oh, it's something else. Sam Driver and Adam Pacitti, using the power of AI music generation, have created new theme music for the likes of AJ Styles, John Cena and Hulk Hogan mm. and the results are fantastic yeah they're unbelievable <laughs> they are unbelievable AI is coming for our jobs admittedly but let's have some fun before we get there why not it's waiting for you on the YouTube channel right now do check it out and for the very latest wrestling news throughout the day you can check out cultaholic.com stay safe love you bye